Is the Earth round or flat? Earth's flat. Do you think the Earth is round or flat? I know we didn't go to the moon. In Miami, the good liars asked if the Earth is round or flat at a Trump rally. We didn't go to the moon? No, we didn't go to the moon. Why, why do you say that? Because you can't get out of the atmosphere. Round or flat? I'm, I'm not really sure. You're not sure? Could be flat? Could be. The stupidity of these MAGA morons has gone viral. In less than one day on X, the video has racked up 1.1 million views and counting. Earth round or flat? Well, you know the answer to that. Can you what? tell me what you think? Please just answer me, please. No, 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 because I want to know. Tell me. Cause, you know, I believe the Earth is round. From NASA pictures, right? Yeah. Okay. And you, you know of C H CGI, right? I've heard of CGI, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I believe in the Bible and Genesis under the dome. It plainly tells you there, under firmament, dome. So it's, you know, it's flat as a pancake. Flat as a pancake. The popularity of this video underscores that a lot of us are intrigued and fascinated by train wrecks, including the intellectual crashes that are part of MAGA. The MAGA lunatics, with their unshakable beliefs, unbridled ignorance, and conspiracy theories are both sad and interesting to watch. But the MAGA imbeciles and remarkable videos like the work produced by the Good Liars keep fueling an ongoing debate within political and academic circles. Are the MAGA faithful solely responsible for their misinformation and absurd theories? Or are leaders like Donald Trump responsible, given the continuous nonsense spewed by Trump and party leaders? I have a strong view, and I'll give you more on that in a moment. But first, Mediate headline, Morning Joe contributor trashes Republican voters. They are the real problem, not the party. The argument from Donnie Deutsch is that if tens of millions of voters can buy into Donald Trump's election lies, those voters, those Americans, are susceptible of buying into anything. The real problem is not the party itself. It's the voters who are subscribing to the party, 74 million of them last time around. This time, Trump ahead in the polls, not by a lot. So the real question and the thing that is the most troubling, and, and I know a lot of these Trump voters, is the party speaks for itself. They're transparent. We see it. Other than Liz, Liz Cheney and Mitt Romney, I don't think there's, and now you saw Paul Ryan, I don't think there's a Republican that has spoken outside of and again or against fearless leader. So what is it about, at this point, half the country that says, that's my party, I'll vote for that, that works for me? That's the troubling part, is, the, is beyond the party, is the voters that are subscribing to it. That keeps me up at night. I get the big picture concern. So many Americans are willing to suspend or ignore reality and instead are gullible to absolute nonsense. And what does that lack of critical thinking skills say about our country? In my view, our education system has largely failed. Most Americans cannot read beyond an eighth grade level. Most Americans couldn't pass a citizenship test and answer basic questions about government, the Constitution, and American history. So yes, we have a sizable population of low information and low thinking Americans. But our nation has always had that. Americans have always had the freedom to not participate in elections, not vote, and not engage in politics or policy. Plus, in America, not having an educational degree is not a barrier to financial success. There's no mandate or public pressure, like in other industrialized nations, to learn about the issues of our time. So, a lot of Americans just tune it all out. And that's okay until a uniquely charismatic and corrupt leader comes along at the same time that the ground is literally moving and shaking under everybody. The seismic shifts I'm talking about involve the high-tech transformation of our society. A recent Oxford study found that because of automation, half of all the jobs that exist today will be gone in 20 years. Many of the new jobs that are coming don't even have names yet. In my industry, for example, what would we call an artificial intelligence news anchor? Robot, newsman, AI correspondent? My point is that this transformation in every industry and community is already happening. The economic impact and pressures on communities and people are significant, even if we cannot quite explain why the factories are closing and jobs are moving around. Instinctively, all Americans know that economic and society changes are happening fast. It's scary. And then we get a charismatic and persuasive figure like Donald Trump, who identifies the uncertainties we all feel and has simplistic explanations. Immigrants are bad. Democrats are taking away everything. Our country's going to hell. I'm the only one that can help you. The lies from Donald Trump and other Republicans are endless. And the fear strikes a chord, especially with people who do not know better. So there's a nonstop feedback loop. 
dramatic societal changes in fear combined with a leader who has easy and simple and sometimes funny answers. The deep state is lying. The election was stolen. The court system is rigged. And when those lies become believable to many voters, it's not a stretch to imagine that some of those voters will take their fantasy world even further. The earth is flat as a pancake. The moon landing was staged. John F. Kennedy Jr. is alive as Mike Lindell. And we're going to find out that, you know, we're, we're, we're watching a movie and uh, evil has been taken down. So, so why would John F. Kennedy Jr. fake his own death and then assume the identity of a pillow salesman? Well, you have to ask yourself, what was he running for? He was running for a seat in New York. Who won that seat? Was it Hillary Clinton? So, so, so John F. Kennedy Jr. is actually Mike Lindell. We'll find out. We'll find out the truth. Have folks. you asked Mike Lindell about this? No. Hey, when he gets here, can we go, can we go ask him? No. Mm, kudos to Jason Selving and Davram Stiefler. Their comedic efforts have shined a very bright light on a part of America that is frightening and bizarre. Is there a solution to the MAGA lunacy? Can the QAnon cult members be deprogrammed or re-educated? Probably not, but our political leaders have a role to play. And some basic guardrails in our political discourse would help. The Trump lies, fabrications, and conspiracy theories should be widely condemned. Otherwise, the QAnon fruitcakes and flat earthers will multiply. America, we have been warned. By the way, Donald Trump supporter Marjorie Taylor Greene recently went full Christian cringe. The Democrats and the fake news media want to constantly talk about, oh, President Trump is a convicted felon. Uh, he is a convicted felon. Donald Trump has now been convicted of 34 different felony crimes. But keep going, Marge. Well, you want to know something? The man that I worship is also a convicted felon. And he was murdered on a Roman cross. Check out that video at the link below. It generated a lot of comments on YouTube. One of the most popular is from Anthony12411 who wrote, MTG's comparison of DJT to Jesus is absurd and blasphemous. Insulting to Christianity, GOP has abandoned Jesus for Trump. I hear you. I look forward to reading your comments about the MAGA faithful who insist our earth is flat as a pancake. Whose fault is that stupidity? I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.